Hello and welcome to Easy Learning with Dr. Salman Khan. this video we will be studying protozoology so these are the sections under which we will be studying introduction morphology reproduction life cycle and classification first let's study the introduction protozoa belong to the kingdom protista protozoal parasite is a single celled organism which is morphologically and functionally complete the word protozoa comes from the greek word protos which refers to first and zoon which refers to animal parasitic protozoa are adapted to different host species free living protozoa are found in all habitats including deep ocean shallow fresh waters in hot springs ice in soil and in mountain top about 10000 species of protozoa are parasitic only 17 of them are medically important next is the difference between protozoa and metazoa according to the features first morphology Morphologically protozoa are unicellular that is single celled organisms whereas metazoa are multicellular or multicelled organisms physiologically in protozoa a single cell performs all the functions that is respiration digestion absorption excretion reproduction etc these are the functions which are performed by a single cell whereas in metazoa each special cell performs a particular function Next general characteristics Protozoa are microscopic in size best seen the high power object of a light microscope they exhibit a wide range of size shape and structure and all of them possess essential common features next the morphology a protozoal cell is divided into two parts cytoplasmic body or the cytoplasm and second is the nucleus all parasitic organisms are eukaryotes first about the cytoplasm The cytoplasm is divided into two types ectoplasm and endoplasm ectoplasm is the external haline portion and endoplasm is the internal granular portion the function of ectoplasm is protective locomotion and sensory function whereas the functions of endoplasm are nutritive and reproductive ectoplasm helps in protection locomotion and sensation whereas endoplasm helps in nutrition and reproduction First let's see about the ectoplasm there are few structures which develop from the ectoplasm these are first the organs of locomotion we have three different types of organs first pseudopodia this is seen in rhizopoda it is temporary prolongation of cytoplasm which is seen in amoeba it serves the purpose of locomotion or to engulf food second is the flagella which is seen in zoomastigophora these are long thin thread like filaments and thirdly is the cilia which is seen in ciliata these are fine needle like filaments covering the entire surface of the body when we compare the speed of these organs of locomotion pseudopodia are having a speed of 0.2 to 0.3 micrometers per second whereas flagella have a speed of 15 to 30 micrometers per second and cilia are the fastest organs of locomotion which are having a speed of 400 to 200 micrometers per second this is as comparable like a person walking a person going in a car and the person traveling in a jet next are the contractile vacuoles these are situated inside the cytoplasm that is endoplasm and they are having the function of excretion that is throwing out of waste products out of the cell next we have the rudimentary digestive organs these are of two types one is cytostome which is the cell mouth and the cytopharynx these can be seen example in the organism palantidium coli next is the cyst wall cyst wall is defined as it is a thickened resistant cell wall which is seen in the cystic stage of the parasite next is endoplasm endoplasm contains these following four structures endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies contractile vacuoles and food vacuoles contractile vacuoles also help in the regulation of osmotic pressure Along with that several food vacuoles may be seen inside the endoplasm. Next, the nucleus. Nucleus is situated inside the endoplasm and it is the most important structure as it controls various functions and regulates reproduction. The structure of the nucleus is often of great help in the differentiation of genera and species of the protozoal organism. So based on the structure of the nucleus, 
we can easily differentiate between different genera or the genus and the species of different parasitic or different protozoal organisms. Next, the structure of the nucleus. It is externally bounded by a tough nuclear membrane. It is made up of a network of linen which encloses a nuclear cell that is clear homogeneous ground substance within it. Next are the chromatin granules which are lining the inner side of the nuclear membrane, peripheral chromatin or appearing as condensed masses around the karyosome. This can be seen in the following diagram. And lastly, karyosome which can be placed either centrally or peripherally. In this diagram, we can see the karyosome which is placed in the center of the nucleus. Next functions of the nucleus. The nucleus serves essentially five important functions. First, it serves as a governing center for the vital activities of the cell. Second, it is a seat of dynamic activity. All the important activities within the cell emerge or take place from the nucleus. Third, it is essential for cell division, growth and replication. Fourth, it is responsible for hereditary characters. And fifth, it participates in the fertilization of cell. Next, these are certain terms which are used in protozoology. First, chromatoid body. It is the extra nuclear chromatin material which is also called as chromodia and it can be seen in cysts of entamoeba histolytica. Second, centrosome. It is generally located outside the nucleus. It may be situated in the center of the karyosome also called as centriole, third kinetoplast, micronucleus and macronucleus. In most of the protozoa, there is one nucleus. In ciliata, two nuclei are present. One is a small micronucleus and the other one is a large macronucleus. The small micronucleus may be in the form of a circular shape, whereas the large macronucleus may be in the form of a kidney or a bean shape. Certain protozoa such as trypanosomatid flagellates show in addition to the nucleus a non-nuclear DNA containing body called the kinetoplast. The flagellum originates near to this. There is a small body at the point of the origin of the flagellum. It is called the basal body. Next, the trophozoite. In Greek, tropos refers to nourishment. So, trophozoite is defined as it is the active feeding and growing stage of the protozoa. About the nutrition of the trophozoite, it derives nutrition from the immediate environment by diffusion or by active transport across the plasma membrane. Food particles of larger sizes are taken up by phagocytosis through pseudopodia. Some species possess spatial mouth-like structures, cytosomes, through which the food is ingested and minute droplets of food particles may also enter by pinocytosis and the respiration the respiration in trophozoites takes place by osmosis and excretion excretion of waste products occurs through the help of contractile vacuoles or through osmosis and lastly is the encystment protozoal parasites possess the property of being transformed from an active trophozoite to an inactive resting or cystic stage during this stage the trophozoite encloses itself within a tough wall and the protoplasmic body thus formed is known as a cyst. In this stage, the parasite loses the power of motility, growth and multiplication. The cyst is the resistant stage of the parasite which enables the organism to survive longer under unfavorable conditions. It is usually the infective stage of the parasite to its human host. This process of cyst formation is called as encystment. In order to reach a new host, it must be transferred mechanically either by a carrier or intermediaries such as insects by food water contaminated with the cysts next reproduction the protozoal parasite may exist in two stages trophozoite and cyst as seen in intestinal flagellates and amoeba in such cases it multiplies only in the trophic stage reproduction usually occurs asexually in protozoans however sexual reproduction occurs in ciliates and sporozoans Reproduction is divided into basically two types. One is asexual method and the next is sexual method. Asexual method of reproduction is again divided into two types, binary fission and multiple fission also called as schizogony. And the sexual method of reproduction is again divided into two types. First conjugation and the second syngamy also called as gametogony. First binary fission. It is a method of asexual reproduction by which a single parasite divides either longitudinally or transversely into two or more equal number of parasites. Mitotic division of nucleus is followed by division of the cytoplasm. In amoebae, division occurs along any plane but in flagellates, 
division is along longitudinal axis and in ciliates it is in the transverse plane. Next, multiple fission or schizogony. Plasmodium exhibits schizogony in which nucleus undergoes several successive divisions within the schizont to produce large number of merozoites. In the diagram, you can see the schizont is dividing into daughter nuclei, which then again rupture the schizont and the merozoites formed inside are released. Next is the conjugation. In ciliates, the sexual process is conjugation in which two organisms join together and reciprocally exchange nuclear material. Example in the parasite Balantidium cola. So in the following diagram, we can see there are two different cells A and B. Both are having different kind of nuclear material and they come together in order to exchange the nuclear material. And at the end of the exchange, both the cells will be having both the parts of the nuclear material. This process is called as conjugation, that is temporary fusion of two cells and the exchange of nuclear material between them. Next method is syngamy or gametogon. In sporozoa, male and female gametocytes are produced, which after fertilization form the zygote, which gives rise to numerous sporozoites by sporogony, example in case of the parasite plasmodium. In this diagram, we can see there is a male gametocyte along with a female gametocyte which then fuse together to form a single cell that is a zygote. Fourth, life cycle. The parasite can exhibit its life cycle in either a single host or a second host. This can be multiple hosts. Protozoa like intestinal flagellates and ciliates require only one host within which they multiply asexually in the trophic stage and transfer from one host to another by the cystic form. Second host, in some protozoa like plasmodium, a sexual method of reproduction occurs in one host, that is preferably man, and sexual method of reproduction in another host, example mosquito. Next is classification of protozoa. Protozoa belong to the kingdom Protista, subkingdom Protozoa, and they are divided into the phylums: first Sarcomastigophora, Epicomplexa, Microspora, and Ciliophora. Sarcomastigophora and Epicomplexa we will be studying parasites belonging to these two phylums. So, Sarcomastigophora is divided into Mastigophora and Sarcodina. Epicomplexa is divided into Coccidae. Mastigophora contains parasites such as Leishmania, Giardia, and Trichomona. Sarcodina contains parasites like Entamoeba, whereas Coccidia has parasites like Plasmodium, Cryptosporidium, and Toxoplasm. So, these are the parasites which we will be studying further. Phylum Sarcomastigophora has been subdivided into two subphyla based on their modes of locomotion. Mastigophora is derived from the word mastix which means whip or flagellum. It includes those protozoa which possess whip-like flagella, example trypanosoma and trichomonas. Next, sarcotina. Sarcos refers to flesh or body. It includes those parasites which have no permanent locomotory organs but move about with the aid of temporary prolongations of the body called Pseudopodia, example amoeba. Phylum Apicomplexa was formerly known as sporozoa. Members of this group possess, at some stage in their life cycle, a structure called the apical complex, serving as the organ of attachment to host cells. They are tissue parasites. They have a complex life cycle with alternating sexual and asexual generations. To this group belongs the malarial parasites in the suborder Hemosporina and the family Plasmodidae, Toxoplasma. Sarcocystis, Isospora, and Cryptosporidium under the suborder Emerina. So, this is all about protozoology. If you wish to see more of such videos, do comment below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Also, press the bell icon for early notification of my new videos.